What's up guys, I'm Lee Morse with fstoppers.com and many photographers over the last few years have been saying photography is a dying breed. Soon we're all just going to shoot video and we'll be able to pull frames out of video. A lot of people say, no, that's impossible, that's not going to happen. Well, we are going to test that out today because I have a red epic here given to us by Cinema Vision for today. I'm going to give this camera to Peter Hurley, the world's best headshot photographer, and he is going to shoot video instead of stills. We're going to then pull frames from the video, print those frames out, and compare them to his normal frames that he shoots with a very expensive Hasselblad digital camera. We'll see if this thing can actually compete with professional level still cameras. Holy smokes. Look at this bad boy. Oh, jeez! I'm gonna need a chiropractor. <laughs> wow! Guys, Red Epic with a 100 millimeter macro on it. We're talking bad to the bone. What I normally shoot is a Hasselblad H3D22, and we wanted to compare the files from that to the Epics. So to have a Red Epic come into the studio to play with was awesome. You gotta wipe that misery off your face. Okay, it's, it's gonna be much better. More appealing for Cassie Richard if you smile in the camera on occasion. We're shooting this on a Nikon D4. This is 16 megapixel camera, right? The, just to put it in perspective, the Red Epic shoots 14 megapixels per image and does 24 images per second. In the past, even with HD video, you were left with a really small image that was not printable. Now you can just go bonkers. The other thing about it that's pretty amazing, it's all raw. You can change the exposure, you can change the white balance, you can tweak it any way you like after you're done. A little bit this way. Keep looking at me. Don't look at me. Don't you be looking at me. Hold that. You look in that cam. You gotta make eye contact with that casting record. If I go over here and you're not looking, we don't have a shot. Don't look at me. Okay, don't look at me. Turn the body this way. Keep going. Keep going. Stand up. Stand up straight. I think it was a strange experience for everybody all around because Jack got in front of the camera and I'm looking at her. I'm going, we're filming. Here we go. Do this. Do that. Move your shoulder. Drop. Turn. Bring your chin out. All right. Hold that. Just, um, you know, I don't know. You know, it was, it was really awkward and strange. There wasn't any definitive moment when we were getting shots. There's no clicking of a shutter. There's no strobe. There's nothing going off. It's just time elapsing. You know, I, while I'm talking, I'm focusing constantly while she's moving and I just got to the point where like, okay, I think we got something. And then we would go off and, and you know, do everything to get it into the computer and look at it. The thing that was crazy was that you know, how much it slowed down my workflow because I had to go through all, I, I shot the footage, I had to go through it, and I wanted to pull the best shots from it, and I was directing while I was shooting, so I wanted to make sure, hey, that was the look I, I was going for. And I could go frame by frame with this. Oh, oh, we're getting there, look at the angle. Oh! This is so cool! <laughs> You know, normally I shoot about 100, 100 frames on my Hasselblad and I whip through it no problem. This thing I shot 7,000 frames that I had to go through. And you have to like watch the video and then go, wait, that looked like a good expression. Go back in and click, 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 click 50 times to get to like the exact right one with just changed like such a minuscule amount to get to the shot you want. So I think the timing of it, it would be just a burden on me. Timing and memory, total burden. This is crazy, dude, this is freaking nuts. I mean, this is nuts. <laughs> this is just, I don't understand. It's just crazy. Oh, unbelievable. Micro expression to the 10th power. It's pretty good. You guys, these prints are gonna look amazing. I mean, how is this thing gonna print poorly? It's like impossible. It's gonna look good. It's amazing. So guys, I just got my prints back from Colorworks, my lab in New York, and I am so impressed. Look at these suckers. Look at these things. Check that out. Can you tell the difference? Can you tell which one's which? Which one's the Hasselblad, which one's the red? I'll tell you what, I could not tell. I had to go into my computer, look up the files to see exactly which one was which. 
I really, I mean, I thought I knew, but I wanted to confirm it. And it's really, I mean, there's a little bit of a color difference, a little bit of a contrast difference. The real difference is just depth of field. The Hasselblad's got a really shallow depth of field because I shoot it at um, f6.3. So it's, you know, that's, that's the one thing. There's a little bit more depth of field in the red. But, you know, in terms of use on an 8x10, nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna know the difference between either one. They're both, you know, I'm, I'm just pretty impressed with this Red Epic, man. Unbelievable. So guys, get this, this is really cool. So at the link below, down there, click on it. You know what you're gonna get? You're gonna get full high-res Im images from my Hasselblad H3D22 and from the Red Epic, and you'll be able to compare them for yourself to see what you think. It's pretty amazing what this camera can do. Of course, I love my Hasselblad, so those are pretty amazing too. So this sucker costs about 80 grand with the lens. We had some major lens. I think it's 60 grand for the body, and the lens was like 20. So it's Adam, obviously, most photographers' budgets. But if we all know what we know about technology is everything gets cheaper as, as new things come out. And, you know, we don't know. Maybe it'll be in DSLR soon. And we will all be fiddling with this stuff and having a good time. Shabang! <laughs> Shabang! <laughs>